Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here with cinemasound.com. And today we're going to be showing you some of the incredible discoveries that we found. Okay, this was a really bad start, but maybe we could just... Ah! Uh, uh. Hey, you're bleeding. Uh, uh, what the hell is wrong with you? Okay, this was a really bad start, but maybe we could just... Ah! Uh, uh. Hey! You're bleeding. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? Um, trying to solve an issue with a film that we were given uh, from a German filmmaker who had done a, a German sci-fi film, and they had done an English dub, but they had recorded it in a, a very quiet studio with a big diaphragm condenser mic, um, you know, up close, very, very clean, perfectly recorded, as you would expect from Germans. But of course, perfectly clean recording is horrible for ADR because it just does not sound good when you apply it to picture. It's one of the issues that we have when we're dealing with ADR in general is that how do we make it sound like it was done on set? One of the easiest ways that we do that, and we talk about this in the cinema sound education, is to use the same microphones that you used on set. And not only just like if you had a lab uh, the actor of the lab would put it here on their shirt where it's convenient, but if it had been in their hair, then you want to put that microphone back here so that it really simulates, really repeats what was done on set. If it's a shotgun mic and it was pointed at three feet, you don't want to have the shotgun mic here in their mouth. You want to have it at three feet at an angle um, so that it recreates as much of the off-axis nature uh, of the microphones as possible. But in this case, that was not done at all. It was a Right up close, beautifully recorded with a pop filter, everything, but just so clean it took the audience out of the story. So when they came to us and said, look, what can we do? You know, your original thought is, well, you know, maybe we could use the speakerphone uh, plug in that does all kinds of convolutions and things. But, you know, that really wasn't going to work. And you can use EQ and distortion, but that's not, I mean, you know, the actors are moving around opposite the shotgun microphone. They're also in a forest. And, you know, it's like, there's no way you can recreate a forest without having some kind of impulse response, but that still doesn't change the actor's mouth correlation to the, to the uh, microphone, wherever it might be. So we took it upon ourselves and I had this harebrained idea. Let's, since I live in a forest, Let's take a JBL 305 Mark II. Let's take my Zoom F8 recorder, use it as an audio device to run it into my laptop running Adobe Audition. Take the clips that we uh, need to, that are ADR, that are the dub, put them into the timeline and sync, and then record not only an NTG3 with a blimp and a dead wombat, but also the MS, the Zoom MS mic from the H series which by the way, you can plug in, you probably know this on the back of an F8 or an F8N, there's a port there to plug any of those detachable microphones. So we plug the MS microphone in, and we knew that we were gonna use it, not in an MS format, but just as a strange left-right stereo recording of the reflections of the speaker off the trees and the leaves and everything else. And then we pointed the shotgun straight at the speaker. Then we had some good results, but I realized that as the actor's head moves, I wanted to, uh, I mean, it was static. And so I actually turned the speaker and moved the speaker around as uh, as the dialogue progressed. And I would watch the screen and move the speaker as the actor would move. We had some great results. Together, we could change something. Break out of this misery, which we now call our life. Tell me, what do you think? Now, some of you are like, hey, look, if you've been through the cinema sound education, you're already like, everything you just said is wrong. You can record multiple microphones, but you would never do it off axis. You would never have an MS mic off axis, and you would certainly never put them together in post. Well, that's true. <laughs> but check it out. Here's what the original ADR sounded like. What do we have here? Ah. <sighs> Whiskey. <clears throat> I don't know when I last held one in my hand. Must be very hard to get one these days. And our composite. What do we have here? Ah, whiskey. <clears throat> I 
don't know when I last held one in my hand. Must be very hard to get one these days. And the NTG only? What do we have here? Ah, whiskey. <clears throat> I don't know when I last held one in my hand. Must be very hard to get one these days. And just the MS. What do we have here? Ah, whiskey. <clears throat> I don't know when I last held one in my hand. Must be very hard to get one these days. Here's another example. And just the ADR? Okay, this was a really bad start, but maybe we could just... Ah! Hey, you're bleeding. Uh, uh, what the hell is wrong with you? And then our composite, which has quite a bit of the impulse response reverb in it. Okay, this was a really bad start, but maybe we could just... Ah! Uh, uh, hey! You're bleeding. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? And just the NTG. Okay, this was a really bad start, but maybe we can just... Ah! Uh, uh. Hey, you're bleeding. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? And you'll notice when we do the MS mic that a few lines are missing because we sometimes it didn't really work to have them yelling and have the MS mic working. Hey, you're bleeding. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you? One of the other things I was able to do is do impulse responses of the force. So that reverb that you're hearing in there is both a combination of the MS mic and some reverb that I added using the waves IRL, using the convolution that I've shown you all how to do in the cinema sound library I actually recorded it all over my yard in the forest outside everywhere else and that gave me some unprecedented uh, ability to add big you know far off shots and have them deep into the woods as well as having them very very up close now one of the problems that we experienced was that because we had this incredible phase you know it's like you're there it's like you're right in front of them to get them to sound like they're far away we actually had to mute the ms mic and just use that shotgun with the impulse response reverb. Here's an interaction between two characters on the move. And just the ADR. They'll soon realize we're here. We'll search for their biggest outpost, get the people from up there, and attack. What do you mean attack? Also, the Sky Shelter's been completely isolated for years. You won't reach anyone. Just so bright. Here's the composite. I'll soon realize we're here. We'll search for their biggest outpost. Get the people from up there and attack. What do you mean attack? Also, the Sky Shelter's been completely isolated for years. You won't reach anyone. Just the NTG? I'll soon realize we're here. We'll search for their biggest outpost. Get the people from up there and attack. What do you mean attack? Also, the Sky Shelter's been completely isolated for years. You won't reach anyone. And then the MS. And you'll notice when the MS is added, if you go back and listen, how much more stereo feels, how much more presence it feels like for you there. We'll soon realize we're here. We'll search for their biggest outpost. Get the people from up there and attack. What do you mean, attack? Also, the Sky Shelter's been completely isolated for years. You won't reach anyone. Why does this work? We, I mean, it shouldn't work, right? It should be all these phase problems and all this wrong, everything's wrong and weird noises. Well, if you take a mono microphone and an MS microphone and combine them, you're really kind of just helping the situation of how mid-side works. Yes, there's phase problems, but those phase problems, especially on a two-way speaker, which has phase problems, if you're moving that speaker around and then getting reflections from around you, those phase variances end up sounding like holophony, uh, where your brain thinks it's hearing something that it isn't. The same kinds of issues that are in the curvature of your ear sort of show up with this kind of combination. Now, I'm not saying you should record dialogue this way. Please don't do that. What we were trying to do is take very clean dialogue and make it sound like it was real. 
uh, in a forest and in an environment like this. So we, but we, but the combination of them creates a stereo field, as well as that mono dialogue and the stereo ambience of the MS mic. We turned it down pretty far, as you can tell, and then adding the convolution reverb to both blended them both together. So we sort of Ben birded, <laughs> like he did with the lightsaber, where he took a microphone, you know, on a TV and did all that with the lightsaber. We sort of did that with the dialogue, but using a two-way speaker. Now this isn't going to work with a one-way speaker, so don't take your oratones out there. It is a combination, a coefficient, an uh, aggregation of phase problems from the woofer to the speak to the tweeter, and the uh, shotgun mic, the MS mic, and everything around it, and the speaker off-axis. And then combining them together with the issues of an IR reverb from around you. So that together creates an unparalleled realism that there was just no way we were going to be able to get trying to EQ the dialogue and do all kinds of other things. It was just never, it was going to be fake. And this is far more real. So check this out on your own. If you've got some clean dialogue or even just regular dialogue, and you've got the kind of topography that mimics it, even if it's in a room. You can do this for interiors as well. See what happens. And if it doesn't save you time uh, by, you know, adding room reflections and EQ and, comp, uh, you know, compression, all that, just see if it works better for you and see if you can create a system that works quickly to be able to recreate these spaces. Now, I don't suggest that you go out and try to do this in a forest, trying to recreate dunes or a swamp or something like this. No, you really need to have the same topography. But for if you do have it, yeah, it should work great. Obviously, you're going to have to do some denoising, but uh, otherwise, it's really, really powerful. Hopefully, this has been valuable to you. Please subscribe to us here at our YouTube channel at cinemasound.com. And I have an article on this where I explain all the gear and everything else much more specifically at cinemasound.com, where you can go and see hundreds, if not thousands of hours of education on how to get audio into that $5 million audience impact that we're all looking for. Until then, I'll see you in the forest. Where you're stuck.